coming up on 5-Minute News. Disney cancels billion-dollar campus over Don't Say Gay Bill. False claims of a stolen election thrive on Twitter, even as Musk promises otherwise. And debt default could trigger recession, Vice President warns. It's Friday, May 19. I'm Anthony Davis. The Walt Disney Company is scrapping its plans to build a $1 billion corporate campus in central Florida that would have housed 2,000 employees, according to an email to employees yesterday, against the backdrop of its ongoing legal battle with far-right Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. Disney Parks chief Josh DeMauro said changing business conditions prompted Disney to reconsider its 2021 plan to relocate employees, including its Imagineers who design theme park rides, to a new campus in Lake Nona. A week ago, Disney CEO Bob Iger publicly questioned Florida's interest in the company's continued investment in the state. In a call with investors to discuss quarterly results, he noted that Disney employed more than 75,000 people in Florida, attracts millions of visitors each year to Walt Disney World, and had plans to invest $17 billion to expand the resort over the next decade. Does the state want us to invest more, employ more people, and pay more taxes or not? Iger asked. Disney and DeSantis have been locked in an increasingly acrimonious battle that started in March 2022, when Disney's then-CEO Bob Chapek criticized legislation in Florida that would limit discussion of gender identity and sexuality in elementary schools. DeSantis, who is expected to soon announce that he will seek the 2024 Republican nomination for U.S. president, then moved to strip Disney of its long-standing self-governing power over Walt Disney World in Orlando. The governor argued that woke Disney should not receive special treatment in the state. Disney called the move political retaliation over what should be protected free speech and sued the state last month to have the moves reversed. In an interview earlier this week, Twitter owner Elon Musk said users making false claims of stolen elections will be corrected on the platform. Yet many such claims have thrived on Twitter in the week since former President Trump spent much of a CNN town hall digging in on his lie that the 2020 election was rigged against him. Twitter posts that amplified those false claims have thousands of shares, with no visible enforcement, a review of posts on the platform shows. The contrast between Musk's promise and the extent the claims are spreading on Twitter underscores a major challenge for social media companies trying to call out election conspiracy theories and lies that Trump and his supporters continue to promote. That will only grow as the nation prepares for a presidential election next year, in which Trump is again vying to be the Republican nominee. It's unclear whether Musk and his newly hired chief executive are planning any changes to Twitter to crack down on the misinformation, which election experts and tech accountability advocates say heightens risks to election officials and erodes trust in democracy. The most widely shared tweets include false claims from U.S. Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene and Carrie Lake, a Republican who lost her bid for Arizona governor last year. Since he took over, Musk has reinstated notorious election deniers, overhauled Twitter's verification system, and gutted much of the staff that had been responsible for moderating posts. The Vice President Kamala Harris and top White House economic advisor Lael Brainard said on Thursday that a default on the U.S. debt of $31.4 trillion would throw the American economy into a recession. In a conference call for Democratic activists, Harris and Brainard urged them to contact lawmakers to express opposition to a debt default that could be less than two weeks away. Harris used the call to keep the focus on the looming default as President Joe Biden spends the next few days in Japan, attending a Group of Seven summit of world leaders. 
Negotiators for the White House and Congressional Republicans met again on Capitol Hill to discuss their search for common ground on lifting the $31.4 trillion debt ceiling and plan to meet again today. U.S. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer said lawmakers from his chamber should be ready to return to Washington on 24 hours' notice from their recess next week in case they are needed for a vote. The Democratic senator said he is pleased that the other side has recognized the best way forward is a bipartisan piece of legislation that can secure enough votes to get through both the House and the Senate. Brainard, director of the White House National Economic Council, said Biden's negotiating team had been instructed not to agree to any Republican proposal on lifting the debt ceiling that would take health care away from Americans or push any of them into poverty. Republicans who are threatening to let the government default are trying to persuade Democrats to accept tougher work requirements for some federal aid programs, as well as spending cuts in exchange for lifting the borrowing cap. Brainard said the administration's goal, in talks with House Speaker Kevin McCarthy's team, is to work toward a reasonable bipartisan budget agreement. The U.S. Treasury reiterated on Monday it expects to be able to pay the government's bills only through June 1st without a debt limit increase, increasing pressure on Republicans and the White House to reach a deal in the coming days. You can subscribe to the 5-Minute News Patreon for bonus videos, commentary and more. Go to patreon.com slash 5-Minute News.